Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. Just a quick tutorial now to remind you about how to work with this spreadsheet of ionization energy and atomic radius um, to generate the graphs that you need um, to interpret for this next section. Okay, so um, open up this same spreadsheet that we were working with last time which has ionization energy and atomic radius data. Okay, so the first one of what we need to do now is to do a graph of the first ionization energy versus atomic number. So the first ionization energy for these first 20 elements is found in the row that I have highlighted now, row three. Um, and so we're basically going to be plotting this data versus the atomic number which is listed above. Now because these atomic numbers are actually from one to 20 um, and our data is the first point to the 20th point, I'm not actually going to bother highlighting um, and plotting this data. Um, the, on the sorry, on, that it would be in row two, the atomic number, because actually, as you'll see, it will work out that way anyway. So I'm going. I need to highlight this data that I'm going to work with. So I click and highlight, and now, as before, I'm going to go up to the Insert tab to find my charts. So over the charts being over here, and then I'm going to go to the Scatter chart, and I'm going to. This time, I, now I did scatter before with just with dots. Now I'm actually going to do scatter with a line so that then you can see, more like a line graph, that you can actually see um, the trend from point to point. Okay, and so now I'm, actually, I'm going to put it um, just over here. And now what I want to do is I want to actually um, put a bit more information on this graph, on this chart. So I'm going to give it the chart title, so thinking about my two variables, so I've got first ionization energy versus atomic number. Okay, those are the two things that my graph is trying to demonstrate. And now I need, I don't have any labels for my axes. So I can go up to um, chart design, and I can go add chart element. And so I've got axes, I've got axis titles, Okay, I've got a chart title, I've got all sorts of bits and pieces I can add, um, depending on what it is that I'm actually trying to show. In this case, I want to add axis titles. So I'm going to add a, a horizontal one, and I'm going to add a primary vertical one. Now, as you can see that neither of these actually is the title that I want it to be, so I have to double, um, have to double click on it, um, highlight the text that's in it, and then change it. So this is atomic number which we abbreviate as Z. And then here I've got first ionization energy, and it's in units of electron volts, which is a lowercase e and then an uppercase v. Okay. And so now you have a graph, if I bring it down, under here that now we have a graph that we can work with. Now the, the thing, just as, as a little tip that I can show you, that we can see that we've got this whole area from 20 to 25 which is not actually showing anything at the moment. So I can adjust this scale so that it just shows from um, from 1 to 20. or from I'll keep it from 0. Um, and so I can double click on the scale and then it's got access options that come up over here. Okay, so it says that it goes from 0 to 25, um, and then this is the kind of the major units for my grid line. So I'm going to change this 25 to 20, and then I'll hit enter, and then you can see that my scale has readjusted, I, and that's, that's all there is to it. Okay, now I can resize this if I want to a little bit to help me to see, um, to see out the, the different kind of trends. Um, and so, yeah, so this is first ionization versus atomic number. Okay, now I can do the same sort of thing with my atomic radius data. Okay, so this is a lot simpler because it's only one measurement for each, um, for each element. But just as before, um, I'm going to highlight that data, go insert, scatter with a line. Ooh, doesn't it look pretty already? Okay, and so now I can do all the same things um, all the, the, the same sort of features that I needed to adjust before. So chart design, um, actually, and I think even, yep, I can actually even hover over this plus button and it can add an element. I can put it and put in access titles, and there you go, in one, um, in one moment it's put in both things. 
Okay, so atomic, whoops, apparently I can't fix my spelling, apparently, but we can live in hope. Okay, and atomic number, and now this is atomic radius in units of what we call picometers, or PM. So which is, pico is 10 to minus 12 meters. Okay, so we're talking very, very small here. And just as before, I can edit my scale to show just to 20. Okay, and atomic radius versus atomic number. Now I'm even going to actually just, um, I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to move myself back to this one, and I'm going to paste it. If I can. Oh, okay. Look at that. I didn't quite actually mean to overlay them on the same thing. Um, that's probably going to be a bit confusing. So I'm going to paste it underneath so that you can quickly refer to both. And just because my OCD is starting to tingle, I'm going to make them as much the same size as I can. Okay, so now you've got two things that you can compare. You can say, oh, okay. I see that I've got a high level here, and then whereas I've got a high level here. And so looking at the trend in atomic radius and the trend in first ionization energy as we go across the first 20 elements. All right, over to you. Good luck. Thanks very much for watching, and bye for now.